So today I thought we'd talk about scenes or snapshots or whatever you want to call it. Uh, waves call it uh, scenes, so let's just go with that. And as of right now with version 14.26 point whatever, uh, scenes, well, uh, they are kind of bad. Uh, it doesn't work all that good. Uh, there are a lot to be developed, I think, but uh, I use it all the time. So let's have a look at how I kind of work around things and hopefully you get some, some uh, ideas of uh, how you could use scenes in, uh, in your work. All right, so here I have created kind of a, a dummy uh, session file. There's no audio going through this. So this is just to be able to show uh, my kind of workflow within scenes. So we have uh, some drums and bass. All of these go to the drum group. Then we have uh, guitars and keys going to the music group and some vocals going to the vocal group and then to effects. And as you can see, all of the plugins are kind of spread out in a quite unusual way. And there's a reason for it, and uh, we'll get back to, to that in a second. So up on the show tab, we have all our scenes. And right now, uh, we have no scenes. So let's just create one to start us off. And let's call this one, uh, how about song one? Uh, and over here on the right you have the scope for what will be recalled when recalling this scene. So uh, typically what I do is just uh, turn off everything so I can choose what I want to actually uh, recall. So first of all let's quickly go through what you can't do. and. Uh, no, there is no fade time between scenes, and that's kind of the, the, the big thing. But another thing that's kind of, well, something that I really miss is if I, for instance, want to recall, say, channel one, I want to recall the fader, and channel two, I want to recall plugin one. Uh, well, that's not possible. Uh, in this case, channel one and two would recall both fader and plugin one. So, uh, the workaround would be to make two scenes. So uh, this scene would recall fader, uh, no, channel one, uh, <laughs> no, the fader on channel one. Then I have to make a new uh, scene. Uh, let's call this song one, uh, channel two. And on this scene, I would have to then select uh, channel two and just the plugin one. So this one would recall channel one and the fader, and this one would recall channel two and plugin one. And obviously, while you could work like that, it's really, really impractical. So it's not something that you would actually do in real life, I think. So let's just delete this one and have a look at uh, how you actually would work with all of this. So most of the time what I do is that I will recall channels and effects, but not groups, matrices, or the left-right output. So in this case, we use uh, channel one through seven uh, and effect one and two. Uh, and within these uh, uh, channels and effects, I will recall plugin uh, one and two and seven and eight, and also the filters and EQ. Not the fader, but oftentimes the mute and the pan, and also the tempo. So this is kind of a typical starting point for me. Uh, plugin 1, 2, 7, 8 uh, for the channels and the effects. And if we flip back to uh, this tab, uh, we can see that on plugin slots 1 and 2, I have high pass filter, high pass low pass filter. On the vocal, I have this... Uh, PC, it's kind of a vocal gate. Then on slot uh, three through six, uh, I have like uh, the Chaps Omni channel. So this will not be uh, recalled when changing scenes. So uh, if I were to uh, boost some high end on the snare and then change scenes, the high end boost would remain the same. Then uh, at the bottom here uh, on slot uh, seven and eight, I have an extra EQ uh, that for starters will not do anything. It's just uh, inserted 
and uh, there's nothing uh, on, on any of these. And on the effects, I have the actual effect on slot 7, so I can go uh, and for this song, uh, say we want uh, just a second of uh, reverb, uh, and on the next song I want some other setting, uh, and because it's in slot 7, uh, that one will be recalled. So let's set up a few songs here and uh, have a look at uh, how you would go about uh, changing settings uh, for each song. All right, I've created five songs and as of right now uh, they are identical, so there's no changes going on when flipping through these. And with this setup, uh, I still have the freedom to kind of override all of the scenes with with faders and with these plugins that are in slot uh, three uh, through six. Uh, so everything I do on faders and those slots will not be affected at all, and and the groups as well will not be affected uh, whatsoever. So to me, I find this is kind of a good starting point. And uh, also on the fit controller, I will set up. Let's have a look. Uh, User keys, so user key 16 uh, will be uh, the next scene and user key 15 will be the previous scene so that I can go back and forth uh, really quickly. And also uh, this button on, on the fit controller will save the current scene that we're in. So I kind of have, have a habit of before changing a scene I will save uh, the scene uh, I'm on uh, currently. So let's go through a few use cases. So say that on song one, uh, we actually, uh, for some reason, don't want any low end in the kick. I don't know why, but that's the way it is today. So let's uh, remove all the low end from the kick with this uh, emo plugin that's in slot eight and uh, thereby will be recalled. And press save. Uh, and if we then go to the next song, and up here you can see uh, what song uh, or what scene uh, that is active right now. So let's go to song two, and then we are back to have actually have some some bass information in the in the kick drum. And the same thing would be true for reverb. So let's let's go back to song one, and uh, on this one. Uh, let's have the, the reverb at one second and save this one, go to song two, let's, well, let's use two seconds. And on song three, let's use, well, you guessed it, three seconds. Uh, four, let's use four seconds. Uh, and this will, when going back to song three, song two and song one, this will follow. And another reason I use the uh, emo plugins is uh, that, for instance, let's go to song two and let's say that on this song the guitar needs to be a bit louder. Uh, then we have the the gain on this emo plugin, so we could just raise the gain coming out of this plugin with six dBs, for instance, uh, and hit save, and then. Going back to song one, then we have the gain at zero, song two uh, plus six, and then song three back to zero again. So this is a way to still be able to uh, override everything with the, the actual fader, but have the, the relative gain be six, six dBs uh, harder on, in this case, song two. Now, mind you, if you are sending this guitar to, say, uh, monitor one, uh, and uh, this is the appropriate level, uh, raising the gain coming out of 
of the plugin. Uh, all right, we are at the wrong song, so let's go back to song two. Raising the gain coming out of this plugin will also raise the gain up on the uh, on the stage for the the monitors or going into any effect. So beware where you're sending things because uh, working like this will affect uh, everything coming after the plugin in in the chain. So as long as you don't need to do anything more than this, just uh, change a few parameters, a few uh, reverb times, well then all is kind of uh, well. It's when you need to go a bit deeper that the problem starts. So let's go a bit deeper. All right, so let's have a look at monitors. And as of right now, uh, none of the uh, monitor sends uh, are recalled. So as long as we don't select any of these, we can kind of uh, work with monitors uh, as usual and uh, change things as we want because uh, none of the monitors will be recalled. So let's, uh, for this one, let's just set up uh, a monitor send and let's send all of the channels and effects uh, at uh, around zero. Uh, so we have a starting point. So right now we can change our uh, scenes uh, as much as we like. Nothing is recalled because we have not selected the, the monitor one in the, in the scope. So say that the artist for song three wants uh, more vocals. Uh, then we need to send more vocals. Let's push it and uh, save this scene. Uh, but if we now uh, move to uh, song two uh, or song four, uh, nothing is changed. So we need to, in song three, select uh, monitor one. And now song three will recall the monitor send for, for uh, monitor one. Uh, however, uh, let's go back. So here we have song two and we switch to song three and yeah, it sends uh, 10 dB more. And then we go to song four, but we're still at the uh, 10 dB extra send level. And that's because on song four, we have not chosen to uh, recall the monitor setting uh, the, the kind of old monitor setting. So if we on song three want to send more to the monitors, then on song four, we as well need to select monitor one so that uh, we will go back to the previous setting. Same thing uh, on song two in this case, because uh, we might go back and forth uh, in, in the playlist. So now song, uh, two, three, and four uh, have the monitor one selected in the recall scope. So uh, let's go back to song two and we are at zero, uh, song three, more vocals, song four, back to zero. But there's a problem with this uh, and that's uh, if we go from, well, let's recall song three with the the uh, extra vocals. If we jump from song three to song one, let's recall this one, uh, then we still have the extra uh, gain going to the monitors because uh, this song one has not the uh, monitor one uh, recall uh, selected. Uh, so, uh, one way of doing it is, let's go back to song three, is to always, uh, if, if we are going to song one, then step through to song one. So the workaround is to have the same recall scope on the scenes before and after the scene you actually want to change. And then you might say, but if I have 50 scenes, it would be kind of tedious to just uh, go through. If I want to go from 41 back to number two, it will take some time. And yeah, it's a problem. So Waves, get on it, fix this. Uh, it's, uh, it's not great. All right, so another use case for monitors is that the artists uh, might find out that actually I don't want any guitars at all. So then you can just remove the, the guitars from the monitor send and go up to the, this uh, menu. And over here we have 
update channel in selected scenes. Uh, then we can uh, select all of the songs and save these changes for all of the scenes. Now, mind you that this will override all of the changes you have done on this channel for all of the scenes. So if you on uh, scene two have some EQ changes, uh, doing this will override uh, that EQ setting. The workaround for that is, well, it's to buy another console because there at this point is no way to work around it. So, uh, but let's hit okay. So going through all of the scenes, we can see that the uh, guitar send is at uh, infinity on all of these. Well, the workaround if, for instance, the, well, let's go with monitor one. If uh, this artist wants uh, 10 dB less keyboards on all of the songs, you would basically just have to go through and uh, lower the keyboard 10 dBs, save this one, go to the next one, uh, lower, save, go to the next one, and go through all of the songs, uh, saving the, the, the new setting. And uh, this will, keep any other uh, EQ or, or uh, panning mute settings that you have uh, recalled. So uh, you kind of uh, recall everything and then make the adjustment and hit save. Now what I find is that between songs I often want to back down on the, on the vocal gate uh, because uh, the singer, when, when talking, uh, will probably not be as loud as uh, when singing. Uh, so a way to do this is to uh, let's make a new uh, scene and let's call this uh, talking, uh, like so. And let's have this one just recall. Let's remove everything but the plugin one on channel six, and that is uh, channel six is the vocal plug one is this PC. So uh, on this talking preset, let's lower the threshold and perhaps uh, lower the range as well. Uh, save this one. Then one way would be to copy this one and place uh, place a copy uh, between each song, like so. So then uh, let's go back to song one and uh, take a look at the PC. So this is song one, this is talking between song one and two, song two. Another way of doing this is uh, let's delete all of these uh, talking copies, uh, is to have, down here we have hot scenes. So uh, when having the talking uh, scene selected, we can have this as a hot scene. So uh, this scene is called hot scene one and and here I have user button 14 to recall the hot scene. So wherever I am in the list, I can always just hit 14 and quickly get back to this uh, scene called uh, talking. Now what I would prefer is that if I am on song four and then hit uh, the, the hot scene, uh, then I would, like to just hit next and come to song five because I was on song four. I just want to kind of recall the hot scene, but uh, still be uh, kind of in, in the in the in the list with, with the running order of the song. But uh, as of right now, that's not possible either. So uh, uh, my workaround for this has been to just uh, uh, copy uh, the the talking scene and place uh, a copy between uh, each song. So uh, it's clunky and slow, but uh, that's the best way I've come up with so far. One feature that, however, is awesome is if I were to delete this talking scene and then change my mind, well, we have the undo button. Uh, so that one actually is amazing and have saved me uh, a couple of times. So the undo button, uh, thumbs up for waves. And you can, of course, save uh, anything you want um, to each scene. So if for song three, we know that uh, we actually don't want any drums uh, or, or bass or guitar, we can, of course, uh, get rid of those, hit save, uh, 
then we just for song three need to bring in the fader in the recall scope. Uh, but then again, we have to on the song before also include the fader and on the song after include the fader uh, if we want to the faders to go back to where where they they were. Uh, so uh, three and song two. Uh, and that works quite well unless you change the song order. If we are having the song three uh, after song four, uh, let's move this one. Uh, then we're back to having some problems because uh, now after song three is song five and song five do not have the fader uh, selected in the scope. So uh, going to song five, then the faders will stay down. So uh, yeah, it's, well, it's not great. It is, it is clunky, it is uh, kind of hard. So, uh, so in this case, we then would need to uh, select song 5 and select the fader uh, in order to have the faders go back when changing to, to the next song. So yeah, it is what it is. So yeah, this is where we stand right now and uh, well, it's not great, uh, it is clunky. Uh, that said, I use it all of the time uh, on almost all of, of the shows. Uh, especially going on tours, I use it uh, for all of the songs. So uh, it's not useless, uh, I, I use it for sure, but there are uh, improvements to be made, I think. So uh, come on, Waves, let's, let's get uh, some, some, more, some more details into, into all of this. So yeah, uh, that's it. Let me know if you have any questions. Take care.